Previa Trusia, g'day guys, welcome to another Soviet Lens Reviews video. It is getting warm here in Australia and it's the perfect time to get out and about and take some landscape shots. And as part of that, you know, I always want to know what is the best ND filter uh, for me to be taking out and shooting landscapes with. So today we're going to be taking a look at three different ND1000 filters to see which is the best one for shooting on your Soviet or vintage lenses. So let's get into it. Alrighty guys, today we're shooting on the Nikon Z6 with the Mir 10A 28mm f3.5 with a black mist 1 8 strength filter from Seven Artisans on the lens. And that actually brings me to what spurred on today's video. I always like shooting landscape photos and I love using ND filters to shoot them. And when Seven Artisans, the lens and filter company, reached out to me and offered to you know, send me a couple of filters to check out in a video, I said, absolutely, I'd love to. Uh, now, with that out of the way, just keep in mind, this is gonna be a completely unbiased review of all of these filters uh, as you'll see later on. Uh, so we're going to be taking a look at three different ND1000 filters. Uh, two of them I've had previously, one of them is the new one from Seven Artisans and we're going to be putting them to the test and seeing once and for all which is the best ND1000 filter for you to use on your vintage and Soviet lenses. Now before we get into that of course it's worth discussing what makes Soviet lenses you know good to shoot with a filter right uh, you know is it something you should do in general and my response to that would be absolutely and I've had so much fun actually uh, this last couple of weeks checking out some of these filters and just you know shooting with filters on my lenses in general uh, I'll probably do a video separately covering the black mist filters, but to start off with, first off, I love shooting with a circular polarizer and an ND filter, just in general, whenever I'm getting my landscape photography shots. And when I'm doing that, I'm often traveling with some of the more compact Soviet lenses that I have, uh, like the Zenitar M1, for instance, like the Era 6M, and one of the real benefits of that particularly if you have the original cases that those lenses came in, is that lots of Soviet lens cases, as I will show you here, so we've got the Era 6M case, uh, up the top they've actually got filter holders uh, with a kind of threaded filter thread up the top of the lens case that can kind of tuck in nicely away. So in this case, I've been storing a bunch of filters there and because lots of the filters that I own, including the ones that I'm reviewing today, uh, two of the ones that I'm reviewing today are thin filters, you can fit like four, four or so filters on the top of a case like that uh, with the Era 6M case or even the Mir 24M case. And it's just so handy for actually storing your filters and really should be on kind of a lot more modern lens cases in my opinion. Uh, so with ergonomics out of the way, of course, we're gonna be jumping in to some photos. So why don't we go ahead and do that and start to look at these three filters. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into some of these photos here. So I went out and took a photo of the uh, Blue Boat House, a pretty famous landmark down here in Perth. And yeah, I just shot this with my Zenita ME1. All of these three photos of the Blue Boat House were shot with an ND1000 filter and the Seven Artisans CPL, that is a circular polarizing filter, um, just to kind of remove any super harsh reflections off the water in this one. Yes, yeah, so if we jump into that, let's take a look at the Seven Artisans one and zoom in. As we can see at 100%, this is a very sharp photo. There is no degradation in image quality um, with a, I believe, 13 second shutter speed for all of these photos. And although I potentially could have exposed it a little bit, um, a little bit less, overall it is a very nice neutral image that's coming out of the Seven Artisans filter. Now let's go ahead and compare that one to the uh, Wyatt filter here, which is the next one. The Wyatt in this image in particular, I mean, it's maybe a touch uh, cooler, but overall it's pretty similar. And if we, again, zoom in, both of these filters produce a very sharp image you know, and a really nice image, to be honest. There's lots of micro detail that the Zenitar ME1 retains in 
particularly the shadows there uh, on the edge of the boathouse. Now let's go ahead and compare the Hoyer to the Seven Artisans as well. Now the Hoyer, it does have slightly more of a uh, kind of color tint cast than the other filters, only very slightly. It's, it's nothing egregious, nothing too bad, but I did also notice that on the Hoyer, it does have this slight extra internal reflection, which might be because the Hoyer, um, my copy of it, it chipped like three months after I bought it and for no particularly good reason. I did not mishandle it, but it's got a little chip on one of the sides of the coatings. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here again. So we've got seven artisans on the left, Hoyer on the right, and you can see that, uh, yeah, both of these filters coming out pretty strong, both, you know, resolving a lot in terms of sharpness. There's no, you know, no egregious color cast there. And if we look down there, they're both looking pretty similar. So overall, both, Really good examples of uh, filters that you can use, although the Hoyer with that kind of chip in the uh, reflective coating, causing that extra little bit of glare, a little bit of a problem. Next up, let's go ahead and have a look at some photos that I took down the beach here. So this is just down my local beach and a sunset uh, photo here. So this was taken at a shutter speed of approximately 25 seconds. And you can see if you zoom in here, a lot of detail. This is the Seven Artisans. And if we go ahead and do a dual view between the Seven Artisans and the Wyatt, and let's go ahead and zoom in right here, we can see that, uh, yeah, both of these filters are resolving a lot of detail on the Mir 10A. And even if we go ahead and pop in the Hoyer, there is a lot of resolution amongst all of these filters. So overall, the only other Thing to note is that the Hoyer you will notice in lots of these examples is darker. So we've got the seven artisans on the left, Hoyer on the right, and I mean, very clear that it is a darker filter. And I actually ran some tests and found out uh, that the Hoyer itself is darker by almost one third of a stop, which for a 30 second exposure uh, means that you've almost got to reduce uh, the exposure time by five seconds on a filter like the Seven Artisans uh, to get the same amount of light in as the Hoyer. And here we go, this is just another shot taken with the Seven Artisans ND1000. I really like this shot. We've got the sun here, we've got a little bit of a flare from the Mir 10A, we've got that super crisp uh, lighthouse there and I mean in my opinion that is just looking great. And again, here we've got a couple of comparison shots of the beach. And I just wanna highlight again, how sharp everything's looking through all of these filters really. But I really do like how the Seven Artisans renders the sand here. Um, it kind of makes those highlights pop a little bit more. Whereas if, if we compare say this one to, um, let's go ahead and compare it to the Wyatt. So we've got the Seven Artisans here on the left and the Wyatt on the right. And yeah, I just like how the Seven Artisan sand is that touch bit brighter, that touch bit warmer as well. Um, I think it just works a little bit better in terms of the overall photo. And then if we go ahead and put it up against the Hoyer, the Hoyer's sand is a lot darker and a lot bluer than the Seven Artisans. Um, now, darker is fine. That just means that the Hoyer is, uh, I guess, more of a true ND1000 filter than the others. But um, yeah, it is maybe a touch bluer in the shadows as well. And last but not least, we've got my favorite photo of the bunch here. This is a photo taken with the Seven Artisans ND1000 on my Mir 10A and the Nikon Z6 exposure time of only five seconds. And I really like this composition. I got down onto the rocks and you can see that uh, we've just got enough exposure time to kind of cool down that water, but still give it a little bit of structure so you can tell that it is running water. Uh, we've got the sun that was just disappearing behind the rock. Uh, we've got a person in there for scale and we've got this beautiful sharp uh, kind of lookout across the jetty and uh, yeah I really love this photo I think it just shows you what a good ND filter can do uh, whilst maintaining all of these details in the rock here um, even at 100% like this I'm really happy with this one a lot of older ND filters in particular could be pretty bad with a bad color cast and you definitely don't want that affecting your photos so I've gone ahead here and just opened up the RAWs you can see here the temp of the Seven Artisans, uh, 5700 tint minus 20. 
and that is looking nice and neutral. If we go ahead and move across now to the white, uh, again, 5,800 in the temp, minus 20 for the tint. So the white is pretty much the exact same as the Seven Artisans. It's really producing a pretty neutral color. But if we move on now to the final filter, which is the Hoya, the slightly thicker uh, Japanese made filter, the temperature is a little bit below, but still within margin of error there, 5,650. Uh, but the tint is actually minus 22. So technically speaking, the Hoya itself does have just slightly more of a magenta cast than the other two filters. Now, it's really not enough to be noticeable. And of course, when you're shooting in RAW, that means that you can just correct it like this. But uh, overall, what we can see here is that none of those three filters are a bad choice in terms of the color cast. So guys, there you go. You can see that there are lots of great options out there for ND1000 filters. And um, really it is hard to go wrong. The only thing I would say is that try and make sure that you go with a thin lens filter if you can, particularly if you're shooting on Soviet lenses like I do, because um, occasionally, you know, those, the corners of the frames can uh, become a little bit troublesome, like if you're shooting on the Mir 10A and you do get that little bit of extra vignetting that's not too nice. But overall, some really good options out there for landscape photographers at the moment. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to continue using them and continue getting some uh, great landscapes on my Soviet lenses. But that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and remember to leave a comment down below. What filters did you use in your landscape photography? Did I miss any? But until the next time, this has been it. I'll see you there.